You think any good there, Troy? I thought he was Indian. But he is a I thought he was. Guy. Oh, he was? I thought he was Indian too. Yeah. Got the wrong fact sheet. <laughs> I recognize him now. Okay, we'll follow you. We're going to go see the dog graveyard. The dog graveyard? Yeah. Let's go see the dog Arr. graveyard. We should have brought a few to put in there. Yeah, walk up the hill, get warm. Get okay. The on trail. Oh, it is a dog graveyard. You bring any flowers? Here's the summit. Built in 1659. Okay. Okay. William S. Hart. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yes, we're all together here at the William S. Hart. Um, Center. Very famous man. California gold. Yes, it's California's gold. Yeah, they got send this to Hugh Hauser. Oh. They got the two dogs over there. Where's his scooper scooper? They go into the graveyard to visit their uncles and aunts. Yep. Yeah. Because they do have a dog green. A dog green. Graveyard for the dog. Very cold up here. We are in Santa Clarita. And close to the house is the castle turret. Paul oh, Rodney. They're doing construction over here. Ooh, that's like a secret passage. Watch out for the rebar. Yeah. Ooh, getting good. Let's actually drive up. It's oh. a restricted view. Ah. Okay. I'm standing right here and that guy pulls some horn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Person and then he, then he comes back to the other Yeah. Hunk horn before proceeding. Okay, here's the house. It's only open for a couple hours a day, two days a week. So we have to hurry. We'll see. Caretaker or a guy. 
Nice little open gate. Right now we're looking for a buffalo. I can take you over there. Okay. Buffalo and yeah. Kevin Cosner. Oh yeah. Yes. yeah. <clears throat> we just got kicked out of the, the house too early for the tour. We're we're um, 25 minutes too early. So we're gonna go down and find some. Sun. This is the hole that this is what was holding the set. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now we should be ready. That's too right. There's something about this place that people want to touch things. So just be real careful, especially um, on the paintings on the wall, they're not protected. So just be real aware of your surroundings and everything will be fine. Um, the video is fine as long as you don't turn on a flash or any kind of light. It will be fine that way. No if you have way. a cell phone, you can kind enough to turn it off so we don't have to listen to your phone play. Whatever song yours happens to be playing this week, some of these cell phones go on and on. And so just be, uh, uh, you turn that off. Ron Hopkins will be your tour guide. Please stay with him. So don't start down the hallways without him. We'll get you through the whole house. Um, William S. Hart was a real person, and Ron will tell you more about it when you get inside. Uh, the house was built in 1927. Hart lived here until 1946, and everything inside did belong to Mr. Hart. Yeah, you know it probably wouldn't it probably didn't pick her up because of the way. You'll be back into the entryway, so we'll see that in a minute. Oh, that's much better. Right on over. Right on over. You'll be back in here in a minute. Oh, okay. Right on over. catches your attention, you're more than welcome to interrupt at any time and ask your question. Uh, I don't know what you know of Mr. Hart. I'll introduce you to him briefly. Uh, he was an actor throughout his life uh, and from a young age, which was originally in New York. And he did uh, initially uh, stage work and Shakespearean work, not to do with Westerns. And then uh, uh, travels with his family, he became acquainted with Native Americans and uh, the idea of a uh, Western actor kind of caught hold of him, and also way back then, I'm talking about in the early 1900s, 1914 to 15 or so, uh, there was a Western actor by the name of Bronco Billy Anderson, which was very brief and kind of toyed with the idea, but not much ever came of it. So there might have been a connection there. Mr. Hart did pursue this idea. He came out here in 1914, making his first movie, in 1915, a movie called The Bargain. And over the years, he made about 69 movies. Uh, of course, these the weren't sound. You had to read the captions. The talkies hadn't come out yet. And making his last movie in 1924, and upon the release of it in 1925, construction began here. And that last movie was called Tumbleweeds, by the way. And you can get copies of it today. And, and there's also some hard narration on the tape. So he, he it is copies of it available. Uh, that was his movie career. Well, regarding his movie career, he wrote his own movies, the screenplay, the script, the whole thing. So what you saw on the screen was really his product. Uh, but regarding his personal life, uh, shortly after he came out here, a sister of his by the name of Mary Ellen joined him. And he and his sister were very close over the years. And they put this place together by way of the, the design and all, which is a Spanish colonial revival architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Hart passed away in 1946 at the age of 82, and his sister preceded him in death by two, three years. Uh, Mr. Hart was in a brief marriage. Uh, there is a, before, not here, but prior to this being built, uh, but lasting less than a year is very short. There is his son, William Jr., who, who lives today, he survives today up in Washington State. He's a man in his 80s. Uh, regarding the structure here, it's about 10,000 square feet, uh, 7,500 feet of living space, approximately 22 rooms. Uh, it cost about $100,000 $100, to build in the 20s, so that'll give you some idea. 
what you see, and we'll start here in the living room, or some of what you're going to see in as you walk through the house. Uh, straight across from you is a, is a food warmer, that, that niche in the wall here, that's a touch Mary Ellen wanted. She saw that in the Golden Magazine. And it's stoked with wood down below, it's not gas fired or electric. Uh, of course, you'll see the house was wired for electric, but it's pretty much the fairly early days of the domestic electricity. On that floor, you'll see but three Navajo carpets. There's 79 in the collection, and they're brought out on a rotating basis just to bring them all out. But uh, you're not going you to see, there's no two alike. So we're, you'll see more as you proceed around the house. Have you noticed in the yeah, design? Yeah. Well, a lot of yeah. people notice that, and that what appears to be the swastika signal, that is a peace symbol, Native American peace symbol. So that's okay. that's where what that, that's what you're looking at there, of course. You have this picture? Okay, now straight across from you, the painting that you're looking at, that's a portrait of Mr. Hart on a on a favorite horse of his Fritz. Fritz was a brown and white pinto pony that was given to him for payment for one of his early movies. And uh, the, the little black and white photograph to the right of it, that's the artist James Montgomery Flagg. You say this was a living room? No, this is a dining room. Yeah. We're going to go upstairs to the living room. Oh, that okay. comes next. <laughs> okay. uh, the horseshoes in the niche in the wall there, that was from the horses of his over the years. And he was very much endeared to his horses as well as dogs he had. It. The one at the top, the honored position, that's Fritz. Oh. And Fritz lived to be 31 years old, by the way, when he died in the Horseshoe in the middle of the bottom row, the one that has Roni on it by name, that horse was 45 when it died in 1968, and that was the last of his horses. And at the time, they think that was the oldest known living horse anywhere. Wow. Yeah, one of the key attractions when you go through the house is the extensive collection of Western art, and some of which is right here. The, the three paintings that are on the two right adjacent to you here, and the one to the right are by, uh, by uh, Robert Lambden, and they were uh, used to illustrate the story that Mary Ellen wrote, uh, the, last of his, the Last of His Blood and stuff. But they, both she and he did a lot of writing. Mr. Hart wrote all these movies as well as some books, and Mary Ellen did writings too. Why did he you know, stop making movies? Why? Yeah. Well, I'm not he sure. Did write talkies? Well, they didn't quite, uh, they didn't start during his time. It was just shortly after him yeah. in the later 20s. Uh, so he during the time that he was, well, in 1925 was his last movie. About that time, uh, Tom Mix came on the scene and kind of there was an overlap there. And Tom Mix uh, kind of had a different style of movie. You know, Tom Mix had more of the action, chasing the villain, uh, you know, some more of the shootout type things. Uh, uh, William Hart's movies were uh, one book that kind of that I wrote about him, a biography of him. It's kind of a you might say a moralistic type storyline. Uh, there was only the heroine in the movie. It's somewhat of a different style. Whether that had a reason or not, I'm not sure about that. Why he actually quit at that time? Because he must have been what about forty something. Well, he died in '46, age of 82, and his last movie was 25. So. Yeah, 60s. Okay, here, this is your everyday breakfast nook. And here's your kind of, as you walk by, kind of, you kind of take a look. There's a pedal type sewing machine in the corner. And then next, we're going to be going through down past the downstairs kitchen. Notice the flooring, which appears to be blocks. That's just exactly what it is. It's a block about two inches thick. And they're really? just all set down to a slab, not stuck down at all. And they were flooded with water to swell up. I guess that's good. And they were coated with something to protect the coating. Yeah, that's wood. The wood, wood, wood. They've got a narrow hallway. So behind you here, that's a, a ice box sharply to your left there. And this is a very early Kelvin Air electric refrigerator. Let me kind of move on through 
Gotta gather everyone together. Hey, you're holding up the. Uh, <laughs> this is the guy who's moving, right? Yeah. What you're walking by here is a, a dumb waiter pulling food upstairs, which you'll see when you get upstairs. And this is a servant's stairway, and that was two bedrooms down there, some more paintings, uh, and offices now. Now we're going to be passing through here. <coughs> as, we, as we walk by that picture there, that's depicting the buffaloes way back when there's millions of head of buffalo. They used to stop the trains, and that was really kind of depicting an excursion to go out and get yourself a buffalo. Now what you're looking at is in that room there, that's just a power room, if you will, a guest coming in to freshen up. That's the picture of the house? Yeah. No, well, no, that's a picture of his house in Hollywood, I believe, not here. He originally lived in Hollywood. Some of these, there's some pictures on the wall here of some of these people you might recognize. Mm -hmm. And that's a Rudy Valley there to the right of the mirror. And that's a William Hart pointing, that's Maurice Chevalier to the right of Mr. Hart. This uh, bronze over here, I'll just kind of walk right on by it. This is by Charles Cristodoro, and there's a life-size version of this in a park in Billings, Montana, and that's a photograph of its dedication in 1924. The artist fashioned this, and, and, and uh, I mean fashioned a life-size from this one. He did this one first. Why is it Billings? Uh, I don't know how it got, why it was dedicated to in Billings. This, uh, this, uh, after to the right of the light, you probably recognize more of his TV Western. Mm -hmm. Can't think of it. Joel McCray. Joel McCray. Oh. And you recognize the small lady in the picture of, under the light, and that's an adult picture of her. And that's in, she's about. Picture? Is that picture? Yeah, picture? yeah, that's her. She's a very small lady. She yeah. was in, they believe she's about in her 30s in that picture. No, no okay. Yeah. She was really small. The picture to the upper left is hard to recognize. You have the shadows on the faces. That's Robert Taylor on the far right and Barbara Stanwyck in the middle. That's taken here, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it appears to be, yeah. And that's uh, Mr. Hart on the left. This is Mr. Hart back in New York doing a bond drive during the First World War time. And you can, he was immensely popular in his day. He was given credit for the really bringing the Western before the public's eye. One thing I didn't point out in the dining room, uh, dining room, I'll point out here, and you'll see it up in the living room. Notice overhead, when it's depicted as it appears, a Wagon wheel. But notice the Native American designs that have been drawn on the beams as well as on the ceiling. And you're going to see more of it up close when you get into the living room. And double railings? Yeah, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it. Well, there's a reason for the double railings. You, 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 it is, does look unusual. I'll point out these paintings, so take a look at them as you walk by. These are by Robert Landon, and to illustrate two stories that Mr. Hart wrote, uh, The Savage and Pinto Bend. As to which one came from where, I'm not exactly sure. And now, uh, next we're going to be going upstairs. The two railings, the, 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 the low one was the original one, that was the combat area, and she was in a wheelchair, and she was involved in an automobile accident very early on and out in the uh, Apple Valley area somewhere, and they went over a sharp dip in the road too fast, and she hit her head over her head in some way, and it was uh, like a whiplash effect and it very affected her, so this is for somebody in a wheelchair, and she would probably went downstairs with assistance, and this was <coughs> The sword and the shield uh, on the wall there, that was Mr. Hart used those in a play when he played Ben-Hur, probably back in his New York days. This statue here is by Charles Cristodoro, the same artist that did the, the horse downstairs, and that's his two-gun bill pose, that's his trademark pose. Yeah. And that, that door is a very narrow staircase that goes up into a projection room. You can see it where it comes out of the wall. These are two Frederick Remington originals, uh, Broncos and Timberwolves, the last of his breed. So now as you come out from downstairs uh, for dinner, you come up here in the living room. 
And then before I forget, a lot of times I forget, took a look at the beams overhead, and then maybe you notice the beams in the dining room. I neglected to point them out to you down in the dining room, but uh, notice the Native American designs on the beams. Well, throughout the living room, the connect co collection certainly continues here. Uh, well, going down the, the, the wall there, that portrait, that's a portrait of Mary Ellen, his sister, holding a favorite cat of his puffins, and that was done by James Montgomery Flagg from a photograph after she had passed away. And that large cabin is straight ahead of you, that's a record changer, but that's a very early version of a record changer, very early one. Uh, that's a Electrola. The, the whole system is made by the Victor Talking Machine Company. The large painting straight ahead of you, that's a Charles Russell original. And that's, the, that was the title of that, is Buffalo Hunt number 14. And Charles Russell took 40 paintings to depict the buffalo by his, his interpretation. So there's 40 of those paintings, so maybe some maybe of that size, varying in size of their galleries and private collections, probably all over the country. The two bronze busts at the base of the picture, uh, that's there by Charles Cristodoro, that's William Sr. on the right and William Jr. on the left, as a, what, early teens. On the piano, back of the couch, and on the gun rack, those, those wagon trains and horses and all. Mm -hmm. Those are done by an artist by the name of Gene Hoback. The horses are hand carved, they're with all the wood, all three of these sets. And the wagons are made from scratch and by Gene Hoback. The piano was brought up, brought here, in here by Mr. Hart or Mary Ellen Both Neither of them played the piano, but it was brought up here for guests and it's used today for special occasions. The bearskin rug, that was a gift from Will Rogers to Mr. Hart and it's believed to be a Kodiak bear. The quirt on a little table in between the two chairs, or some people call it a crop, and that's a gift from Wyatt Earp to Mr. Hart. Two more Navajo carpets here, no two Sorry. alike, as you'll see. Okay. Sorry. I don't know. Sorry. I have a box. Oh, you've probably got my elbow. <laughs> no, I have a box. I'm good. Sorry. I just want to see okay. the wider. Okay. okay, notice I'll draw your attention to the mantelpiece. Uh, to the right is a, is a, a bronze bust. It's by it's, uh, Chief Little Wolf of Cheyenne. It's by a Mr. Oh, he's good. By, yeah, don't, by a, don't worry about uh, me. Mr. Proctor. Mr. Proctor, by the way, that, that did that bust, he did the, uh, the, the uh, Pony Express logos that you'll see around the country at historical locations. And also, he's known for his life size statues. And uh, at the University of Texas in Austin, he has, uh, uh, I believe, it's six Mustangs life-size that he did. It's quite impressive. It's in the middle of the fountain, I understand. One person in one of the tours not recently had seen it. Well, that, yeah, that bronze to the right, that's by Mr. Crawford. And what you're looking at in the, the display case, the one to the left, and there's a third one we'll be walking by. That's a Native American artifacts of Mr. Hart's collection. And this by the window is a, this is a solid piece of log. And a young boy, a teenager, carved this. And it's hanging on the front of a truck, as you see in the picture. Mr. Hart saw this down in the, what would be the village and at the time. And he asked the young boy about it. He says, oh, you know, I didn't think much of it. And he says, well, it's going to get damaged and all kind of buy it from you. So he allegedly paid him $300 for this and brought it up here. That's a fair amount of money. So this is where that came from. He saw that money. What you see here is the projector looking at you, and that's a simplex projector. It's a 35 millimeter projector, and you don't pick it up and move it from table to table. It's a big piece of machinery in there. And they had a, a screen, the front beam they pulled down to show movies. This is a Charles Russell original. It's a favorite of a lot of people. When you hear the title of it, you can just see the story in front of you. It's when the nose of a horse beats the eye of a man. The horse has picked up the bear, the cowboy is just going for his rifle. Oh. An outback horse is very sensitive by the way of his nose to the surroundings, not so much the eyes. To the right is a Charles Russell painting that was just uh, done uh, especially for Mr. Hart. This is a Charles Russell original. And the frame is also by Charles Russell. He didn't frame any of his pictures. Well, I mean, directly, maybe he had other people do it for him, but he, this 
Charles Russell made this frame, and so this whole unit here is a Charles Russell uh, artifact. The top is a plaster rendition of Fritz, and this is some letters from Charles Russell that Mr. Hart had put into a book. Some of Mr. Hart's writings. These are two uh, bronzes by Charles Russell. And that's, uh, that's Charles Russell in his log cabin from uh, Great Falls, Montana. This little display case here, that's a, a recording of Pinto Band that uh, Mr. Hart uh, reads. Uh, that's a Charles Cristodoro piece of artwork that was carved from a bronze billiard ball. There's all that sharp detail. It just started out as a billiard ball. This is, uh, he was acquainted with uh, Amelia Earhart, and that's a flag she carried in one of her early flights across the Atlantic. And that's a, that's a rendition of The Last Supper being from a piece of ivory. The artists don't know who it is, but each figure is loose, and as you look closely, the, the facial expressions is different on each one of them. Hmm. We're going to be passing through the hallway down here next. What you see here is the, this is Mary Ellen's bedroom, they're the configuration of the hallway, it's, it's gated right here. This is a very elegant bedroom, the way it's fixed up, and what's back of you right here, that's the phone booth, upstairs phone booth, that is the phone booth, that was an intercom downstairs. And that's the phone booth there to the right, that sheet of paper with the phone numbers all on one side. And this is a photograph. This is a photograph of somebody to the right that you know the person by name, but you may not recognize him in a picture because he's in a business suit. If he was in his western garb, you might recognize who that is. That's uh, Wyatt Earp. Oh, this is Wyatt Earp? Yeah. Or what age? I'm not sure about 60. When, he, oh, when Mr. Earp passed away, uh, Mr. Hart was uh, Paul Berry's funeral. Mm -hmm. They were very close. Wyatt Earp. You see Lindbergh's picture. Yes, staying overnight. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Lucky time. Lindy. That's why Yep. Let me get a shot of him. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> okay, let's see. Low light, sorry. Low light. Low light. Ooh, down this way. This is the upstairs. Sitting room, you're going to just lounging around, you know, then you're not in all the park, you know, too far. A lot of this artwork, a lot of this artwork is by James Montgomery Flagg, uh, and it's, it appears that he's using Fritz as his subject matter as you walk by. Fritz. He must have been uh, a, a movie um, artist. He was very small. This is yeah, this yeah, yeah. Stuff yeah, yeah. yeah he, a lot, he did a lot of, he illustrated a lot of stories. Yeah. It could have been, yeah. yeah it's definitely yeah. using Fritz in the, as a subject yeah. matter, most of them. Here, here you can see the artwork on the door. I don't think they would be the This is the This is nice. Like that painting up there? Like nice. See the painting in the corner? Over this way? No, over, look to your right. Oh, yeah. And that's uh, Charles Russell. This is your typical bathroom of the day, everything white then, because you didn't have colors then. You got white today by choice. What do you have out here in these cages? Oh, I see. It's air conditioning. Oh, yeah. It's not, it's not air conditioning. It's really just uh, moves air. Just kind of lower. <laughs> Pardon me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> gotcha. Come on in. History discovery. Wow. Well, how do we get the balls? I mean, is 
Is this like a speckle on there? It's not wallpaper on the wall. Let me take some of the tour again. So I don't And he spent a lot of time on that. He invited a couple people up here as well. And what's this an outdoor home? Okay, this was added on to. This was kind of just a patio. This was added on to for security reasons. This is the only thing that's really been done to the house per se. Throughout the house, by the way. Um, everybody's waiting. His his bed. Well, master. Of Come on, man. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you, 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 I've seen it a lot. I'll just let you people go. Okay, this is Mr. Hart's bedroom, and certainly not other way that these collections continues here. The large brown coat straight across from him, and that's a buffalo hide yeah. coat, and it weighs about 45 pounds of weight, isn't it? Uh, that keeps you warm more. And that's the Angora shaps draped over the chair there. And that's Mr. Hart wearing those shaps, that black and white picture on the dresser. That's William Jr. Uh, to the left of the dresser at a younger age, and that's a baby picture to the upper left of that picture of, of William Jr. He didn't get in the movies, huh? No. no. What's he do now? Uh, you know that? what his occupation was over the years? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. But he chooses to live up north. Yeah. He never did reside here. Not very much. He was here. We had, it's understood that he was here when he came to the father passed away. His father passed away. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did I mention when he died? He died at the age of 46. 1946, age of 82. That's his writing gloves on the, on the dresser, on the desk there. It's a duster coat on the bed. Bricks over the bed. So he and his son were really not that close. Uh, yeah, people always wonder. You don't. You wonder. I mean, they didn't live together over the years. <coughs> As to quite how much back and forth, I understood maybe he and his mother may have been in the Bay Area for a while. Uh, uh, yeah. We don't really know how much back and forth or what. The old radio of the day. In the beginning, the woodwork was fancy on those yeah, radios. Really. <laughs> What you just came from, that bedroom, was added on to in 1937. Uh, this was Mr. Hart's bedroom originally, and now it became whose room that's in the picture. That, that it became a dog's room. And these couches were left here, and the dog, each, each dog had a couch. You can see how it's all sunken in in the middle. And it was the Great Danes primarily then. And then it was uh, appeared to be litter mates. Uh, <laughs> Exactly the same age, not uh, same size. Looked to be the same age. Uh, Prince Prince Hamlet and Princess Galatea. Prince and Gal. They call it. Two more novel carpets. They probably weren't here at the dog's time, but two more or two like. And that's his walking hat that he always wore. That black hat that's also in the picture. This is this is interesting stuff here. Is this was this was this here? Well, yeah, you know, you know we point that out, it was a dog laying on that very much. Uh, it, 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 it sort of appears that it was. Uh, it looked like the, because that's beach. Fantasy. Well, it's, it, it, that has not been redone in recent times. So, is that a blanket that's kind of tucked in? Well, well, it appears to be a, a blanket with some beadwork just laid yeah, across it. Yeah, I love it. It's very nice. The bow and arrow over the window, by the way, it's Apache by origin. It was a gift to him. As to from who, I'm not sure. That radio across from you, that, to, that radio and the clock is just what you're looking at. It's a clock radio. That clock is wired to that radio that was purchased that way or somebody may fix it up for him. I'm not sure. The safe was not used to lock things up. It was used in his movies. And before the Great Danes, he had a bulldog named Mac. And, and when he lost Mac, somebody gave that to him. It's a paper mache. And a paper machine that head moves, a bottle head. Now, who are all these drawings by? The okay, name? straight across from you, and that's Charles Russell artwork. You can, maybe you look at Charles Russell, it won't take you long to look at his style, and he has a real sharp action, like that horse picture, that nose of the horse. 
as well as that buffalo. He really grabs the action in his pictures and very sharply so, and that's just typical straight across here. That's Charles Russell. And so are these to the left in the corner. That's a portrait of Mr. Hart in the hallway going back to Mary Ellen's bedroom. My artist, I'm not sure who it is. Uh, this, this photograph here is your two very famous Western people, Charles Russell and Will Rogers, side by side. Mm -hmm. So you're close to this. Uh -huh. And let's see. What, so that's Charles Russell, the artist. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, that's and, Will there. Yeah, that's Will. Right. He was no, a. No, those are the hat on. This is Charles Russell here. It should be Will Rogers. No, that's Charles Russell. Really? You know, he see how his hair always come down the left side of his head? That's Charles Russell. Wow. And that's the Will Rogers. That's a young man. Uh, yeah, go ahead and take one of those pamphlets if you like. Wow. It tells you about Friends of Heart. If you want to join me on a mailing list. Oh, yeah. So that's the end of the tour. Unless we have more time. Like, oh, is, does anybody have any parting questions? Um. Well, so, yeah, well, that's all done by volunteers. Once you step through the front door, it's the volunteers that do the dusting and cleaning. And the county maintains the outside, the structure, the roof, and the grounds. Yes. And the original estate was about 230 acres when Mr. Hart bequeathed it to the county. When he and he had a lot of animals there. Yeah, and uh, the county added about 30 some acres, so that the whole park down there is. Regarding his animals, the, <laughs> Those animals you see down below, they're not there just like a petting zoo sense. He requested that animals be maintained on the premises, so that's why those animals are there. Okay. And if you want, and then if you, if you have time today before you leave, uh, alongside the, where the animals are, and there's a gift shop, there's a passageway, just walk up there to the end of the animal pens. It's just a sharp one. You turn to your left, and there's a white picket fenced area, and that's where the horses are buried. And there is a bronze monument to Fritz there. Okay. So they've been trying to fix that up. They, I think the picket fence has been painted and they've got some landscaping. Does so I notice the design on the door? The rounds are fabulous. It's wonderful. Or if the base of the, the base of the, if the base of the, the Michael, is, uh, yeah. his, he's right, his name on the front of the and he embedded a couple of his guns there. I mean, the impression of the gun on the front of the no, no, it's been there a while. Thank you very much. I can't Look, I'll just get a shot of this. Go ahead and take a picture. All right. Picture. Take picture. All right. Hey, thank you. All right. And, oh, sorry. And that shows up. Yeah, real one is on the way. Yeah. <laughs> Charles Russell always did his hair, always came down on the side. Every picture you'll see. Yeah, okay. Thank you. All right. Hey, thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well. Uh, where do we go to find the uh, the horses? Pardon? That's the the imprint of the guns. Oh, I didn't catch that. All right. Hey, thank you.